moms and dads, boys and girls, how are you guys doing today? My name is Brian Cusco, and I'm here with Roaming Reptiles, doing a video in partnership with the County of San Luis Obispo Public Library and the foundation for the San Luis Obispo Public Library. Today I've got one of my friends with me, his name is Sunset, and he's an indigo snake. I've been keeping snakes as pets since I was about four years old, so I've gotten to learn a thing or two about them in that time. And this boy Sunset here, he's an indigo snake. And they call them an indigo snake because of their very dark scales that are almost black in color. They appear very black. But it's actually a very deep shade of purple or indigo. And that's where they get their name. These guys are native to the United States, the southeastern United States to be exact. And one of the common questions I get about these snakes in particular is what do they eat? Because many snakes do eat rodents and other mammals of that sort, but these guys have one of the widest varieties of diets of any snake out there. These guys actually eat chickens, birds, eggs, lizards, frogs, even other snakes. These guys are actually immune to rattlesnake venom because rattlesnakes are part of their diet. These guys are protected in the wild, so if you see them out there in the Florida Georgia area, you're not actually allowed to pick them up. In fact, I got this guy from somebody who bred him locally here in California, and if you were to get an animal from outside of the state, you would need a special permit just to be able to keep one that was produced in captivity. This guy usually has a very bright red color underneath his face, but sunset here is in shed. And what it means when a snake is in shed is that they're creating a new layer of skin underneath their current layer of skin, and eventually they will shed the old layer off in one piece, kind of like this. How cool is that? So we as humans are always shedding our skin constantly. Lizards and snakes will shed it all at one time. Now you can see Sunset here flicking his tongue out of his mouth there. What he's doing is he's actually kind of tasting the air. Snakes can breathe through their nose. However, they use their tongue as a more advanced sense of smell. They will flick their tongue out in the air. They'll bring little particles out of the air back into their mouth and stick it to, into the roof of their mouth into an organ called the Jacobson's organ. And they can actually pick up scent particles that have been there for for a long time. They can smell what you had for breakfast this morning. They might even smell what, they had, what you had for breakfast last week if you didn't wash yourself really well. Their sense of smell is about 600 times better than our own. So it's one of the main ways that they try to pay attention to their surroundings. Another commonly asked question about this snake and a lot of snakes are, is it poisonous? I want to clear up real quick for you guys that with the exception of one single snake out there, no snakes are poisonous because what poisonous means is that if you eat it, then it will hurt you and harm you. But snakes that are what's called venomous can bite you and inject their venom into you. So that's the main difference between poisonous and venomous. It's a common misconception that people consider things like rattlesnakes to be poisonous when they're actually venomous. Our boy Sunset here is non-venomous. And actually most snakes in the world are non-venomous. Out of the thousands of species of snakes out there, only actually a few hundred are actually venomous. Now that being said, if you see a snake out in the wild and you are not 100% certain what it is, you should probably leave it alone. In fact, if you find any animal in the wild, it's probably best to let it be in peace and let it do its thing on its own. One other thing I might mention about Sunset's tongue here is that it's forked. You can see it has two sides to it. And since their tongue is forked, they can actually smell what's left and they can smell what's on the right. And when they flink it up, they can smell what's up, they can smell what's down. Their sense of smell is really, really one of the most spectacular things about them. Now a big part of our program was allowing people to actually hold and handle these animals. Since we're doing this through a video, Obviously, that's really hard to do. So I'd like to describe to you how these guys feel. A lot of people will see their shiny skin and scales and think that they're kind of slimy. But the fact is that they're actually very smooth and very dry. Probably one of the drier things that you'll touch ever. They're just extremely dry. Their scales are actually made out of the same stuff that our fingernails are made out of, which is called keratin. And each scale is coated in a layer of keratin, which helps to protect the snake from drying out or other animals trying to bite and eat them. It offers a great layer of protection. 
and different types of snakes have different feels. This particular animal here has very smooth scales, but there are other snakes that have what are called keeled scales, and they can feel very rough. A thing like a rattlesnake has keeled scales, and it feels almost like a piece of sandpaper. Would you guys like to see Sunset's girlfriend? I'll bring her out. This is Sunset's girlfriend, Midnight. Now, Midnight doesn't have the red underneath her face like Sunset does. And she is also going into shed, so you can kind of see that her eye is kind of a milky kind of color when it's usually solid jet black. Another common question that I get about snakes and all the other animals that I show here at Roaming Reptiles is do they bite? It's a very good question, and my answer is always that anything with a mouth can potentially bite. I can potentially bite if you catch me on the wrong day. But the fact is that most animals do not want to bite people. Most animals just want to be left peacefully alone. In fact, the only reason an animal would bite you is if it was scared. Animals aren't mean, especially snakes. Snakes are definitely not mean. Sometimes people think they look mean, but they're not mean. They're not like that. They just, they will bite if they feel like their life is being threatened. Keep in mind, we are bigger than these snakes. We are scary to them sometimes. The reason I'm able to handle my snakes like this is because I've been handling them since they were babies and they're somewhat used to me, so they're not that scared of me. Another common question I get is do snakes have bones? And the answer is yes, and that makes them vertebrates versus things like cockroaches, flies, worms that don't have a backbone. So snakes have a backbone just like we do, and they have a skull just like we do, and they also have ribs just like we do. And that's about all the bones they have. They've got their skull, their backbone, and their ribs. And that's why they don't have arms or legs, as you can see. It's fairly obvious. One of the most obvious things about snakes is that they have no arms and legs, clearly. So it's just the skull, the backbone, and the ribs. And the rest is, is muscle, helping all of those bones to move around, and then surrounded by the skin, of course, to protect it all. Skin and scales. Now this is just the first video of 10 that I'm going to be doing for the library, so if you're enjoying this video so far, you can look forward to a lot more coming with a lot of different animals, including lizards and spiders, and much bigger snakes, much smaller snakes, frogs, turtles, toads, all cold-blooded creatures. Now what cold-blooded means is that an animal does not create its own body heat. So we humans are warm-blooded, which means we burn energy to create our own heat which is why we can put on a sweater or a jacket when it's cold outside and trap some of our body heat close against us to keep us warm. If it's cold outside and a snake or a lizard tries to put on a jacket, it doesn't work because they don't produce their own body heat. They rely on outside sources of heat like the sun to get their bodies to the temperature that they need to be. That's why when you're keeping these animals as pets, it's very important that you provide them with the proper temperatures so that they can maintain their body heat. Where they rely on those temperatures to perform all the functions that their bodies need to perform like digesting food or even just pumping blood through their bodies. I want to thank you guys for enjoying these snakes with me today. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you have any questions about the presentation that we've done for you this day, then I would ask that you check us out over at roamingreptiles.com and we can hopefully answer any questions that you might have. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Take care.